D. Hunter of the Dead. After discovering Elden Ring's roundtable hold, D will usually be one of the first characters that the player notices. He is known as a Hunter of the Dead, and his goal is to exterminate all forms of the undead found throughout the lands between. The story of D ties into several other characters and helps to highlight some of Elden Ring's core themes of duality and personal convictions. Part of D's quest is also mandatory for unlocking one of the endings of the game, so in this video, we'll explore why this character in particular was used to play such an important role. Spoilers ahead. There are two locations where the player can initially meet D, the first of which being the Round Table Hold. The second, more interesting location is right next to Summonwater Village in Limgrave. He stands over a body and states that death has left its mark once again, though he is relieved that this person did not join what he calls those who live in death. D warns us of the nearby danger, and he brings attention to something called a Mariner. If we ignore his warning and investigate the village, we're greeted by skeleton warriors and a spectral sailor boss referred to as a Tibia Mariner which can summon even more undead. If we defeat it, the Tibia Mariner drops the Skeletal Militiaman Ashes and a key item called Deathroot. The Skeletal Militiaman Ashes description states, These are the spirits of militiamen who live in death, and will continue to rise again until properly finished off. This is the grotesque fate of those who come into contact with Deathroot. Looking back at Summonwater Village, we see these growths that resemble the Deathroot item that the Mariner dropped. The growths are textured as if they were made from some sort of flesh. The description of the Deathroot we picked up reads, A source that gives rise to those who live in death. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen Rune of Death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the Rune of Death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the Great Tree, sprouting in the form of Deathroot. This first death of a demigod refers to how Godwin, the offspring of Godfrey and Merica, was killed in the Night of the Black Knives. Showing this death route to D prompts him to introduce us to his master, the beast clergyman Garank. D clarifies that someone skilled at weeding out death route needs to take his own place after D attends to a matter of his own. I spotted the mark of this centipede here in the village, an ill omen symbol that should not be someone or something threatens the sanctity of the Golden Order, and must be eradicated. Following the mark that D puts on our map brings us to a waygate that transports us to the Bestial Sanctum. The Beast Clergyman consumes the Deathroot, and he rewards us with different Bestial spells for each Deathroot that we find in places like graves and catacombs. D actually uses Garank spells against us if we fight him. So D gained the benefits of bestial strength along with tools to locate those who live in death by serving Garank. Whether the player first met D by Summon Water Village or in the Round Table Hold, he now becomes a merchant for the player in the Round Table after meeting Garank. When asked about himself, D explains that he serves the Golden Order and hunts those who live in death because they fall outside of the Golden Order's principles. He sells incantations of the Golden Order Fundamentalists, which were utilized by the Hunters of the Dead and inflict holy damage that can prevent the undead from reviving. D is entirely devoted to the Golden Order, and his hunt for the origin of the Mark of the Centipede is just one more step towards the Golden Order's perfection. Another member of the Round Table Hold, named Sorcerer Roger, can give some clues about the Mark of the Centipede. When asked about D, we learn that Roger and D were once friends bound by their mutual exploration of death. Roger explains that the centipede is an ancient symbol of the curse mark of the Rune of Death, the weapon used to kill the demigods in the Night of the Black Knives. By also seeking the curse mark himself, Roger wishes to instead save those who live in death by weaving death into the order imposed by the Elden Ring. These souls have committed no offense. They have every right to life. Only, they happen to touch upon a flaw in the Order. Questioning D about Roger prompts him to say that Roger was once a wise, formidable spellblade, but his exposure to death has left him ravaged by thorns and living as if he is already half dead. Further conversation with Roger reveals that a curse originating from the demigod Godwin's corpse is the source of these thorns. Following a pretty long quest involving Roger and Ronnie the Witch, we can eventually find a curse mark of death on the corpse of Ronnie's original body. 
This item explains that Godwin died in Soul alone before becoming the source of this curse of death throughout the lands between. The next character that relates to D is Fia, the deathbed companion. Fia has the ability to embrace the player to receive their vigor and bear blessings. While it's not explicit, we are probably meant to interpret this as some sort of reflection of the conception and birth of a child. Fia tells us that her purpose was to lay with the remains of an exalted noble to bear him into new life, but she was awakened by the guidance of grace and chased from her birthplace before doing so. If the player has progressed to the Altus Plateau, Fia requests that we find the owner of a weathered dagger to return it to them. Fia claims that she received the dagger as a gift, and that it holds a special place in the original owner's heart. The description of this dagger describes it as a weapon of gold and silver intertwined hinting to us that the original owner was Dee, whose armor is composed of silver and gold material. Dee accepts the dagger, but he says that he will return it to the original owner, rather than claiming that he is the owner himself. The next time you visit the round table shows that Dee has fallen victim to death's thorns, with Fia standing over him. She claims that a hallow brand has been returned to its rightful place before giving a message for the round table. Disturb not the death of Godwin. The exalted, we who humbly live in death, live in waiting, to one day welcome our Lord. What right does anyone have to object? Our Lord will rise, the Lord of the many and the meek. We can loot Dee's corpse to obtain the twin set, which depicts a man of gold entwined with a man of silver. Before his death, Dee would almost always be using one of his hands to cover the eyes of the blindfolded silver man on the chest plate. While this is the last of what we see of the round tables, Dee, there's now a new question to answer. Who is the other Dee? Eventually, Roger dies to the thorns as well, leaving behind one last piece of advice for the player. I forgot to tell you, but it seems D has a younger brother. I heard he lies in a deep sleep in the aqueduct beside the eternal city of Nakron, and it's said he stood before the Prince of Death not far beyond that spot. The description of the twin set gives further insight to D's brother. The two known as D are inseparable twins. They are of two bodies and two minds, but one single soul. Not once do they stand together. Not one word do they speak to one another. Perhaps this armor longs to find its way to the other D. It's fitting that the other twin is found by an eternal city, as that civilization is strongly correlated to themes of silver in contrast to gold. Following Roger's advice, we can find the other D shortly before the twin gargoyles boss arena. He is entirely unresponsive, and the only action the player can do is give him the twin to set. The next time you enter this area, D's brother is gone. Continuing beyond this area, we travel through deep root depths to find where Godwin's disfigured body is buried. If we approach, the spectral form of those who cooperate with Fia are summoned to fight us. These include Fia's adoptive father along with Roger himself, despite his apparent death. After defeating her champions, we can confront Fia and either claim that we are here to kill her or say that we are here to be held by her again. If we choose to be held, Fia gives a full explanation of her goals. Godwin's flesh was marked by the half-wheel wound of the centipede, and this hallowbrand was retrieved by the round table hold, likely with the help of D. After Fia kills D to reclaim this hallowbrand, the other half carved into Ronnie's body is required before those who live in death can receive their lord. We can give Fia this lost curse mark, and she explains that with this, Godwin can take his rightful place as first of the dead and claim a second life. Fia lays with Godwin to conceive the rune of those who live in death, which represents Godwin's new life. With the warmth of the player, the mending rune of the Death Prince is formed. Rune gestated by Fia, the deathbed companion used to restore the fractured Elden Ring when brandished by the Elden Lord. Formed of the two Hallowbrand half-wheels combined, it will embed the principle of life within death into order. The Golden Order was created by confining destined death. Thus, this new order will be one of death restored. 
The details of how the Order of Death Restored differs from the Golden Order are really difficult to confidently describe. I'd love to hear how your thoughts differ from mine in the comments, but for now, I'll give my best understanding of it. In the Golden Order, souls seem to be funneled through the Erd Tree to be recycled into new life, but the removal of the Rune of Death from the Elden Ring prevents certain beings from dying. With this new order, destined death for all beings is restored, and instead of souls being recycled through the Erd Tree, everything first lives in death before being born into new life. This halts the oppression of those who live in death. The undead become commonplace in the lands between, and Fia acts as a guardian and mother to them all. Of course, there's one issue with Fia's plan. The person that she killed was not the original owner of the Weathered Dagger. See the wrath of the Golden Order. The Order's justice writ in blood. This is what's become of your precious witch. Naught but expired meat and bone. This is a proper death, O oh Prince. Dee's brother, the Beholder of Death, who seems to have awakened after being given the twin set, returns to where Godwin's body lies and kills Fia. He says he can now look his brother, Darien, in the eye. This tells us that the first Dee we met is actually named Darien, along with giving reason for him covering the eyes of the Silver Twin on his armor. Darien's brother, who seems to be named Devon based on Darien's quote if we kill him in Limgrave, has some sort of past regret that brings him shame. This regret is likely tied to his first encounter with Godwin that's referenced in Roger's letter. In killing Fia, Devon makes up for his past mistakes and doesn't need to cover the eyes of his twin like Darien often did. The player still holds the Mending Rune of the Death Prince, and now, we can follow through with Fia's plans for us to become the Lord of those who live in death, or we can respect Dee's goal to perfect the Golden Order. This marks the end of the story of Dee. Darien and Devon, despite never speaking a word to each other, both come to dedicate their lives to the cause of perfecting the Golden Order. Even their identities become intertwined with both of them being referred to as D by anyone except for the other. Finally, upon reloading the area or killing this version of D, you receive the inseparable sword, the final reward for this quest. This item explains why the twins care so much for the Golden Order, and it reads, Sword forged by compounding silver and gold, a sacred weapon to hunt those who live in death. The inseparable twins found solace in the Golden Order, the only institution not to revile them as accursed beings. Of all the groups in the lands between, the one led by Merica and Radigan, who both share one body, is the only one to accept the nature of D. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.